Okay, everybody, welcome to the very last tech chat of the day, and also alcohol follows, so that's a nice thing. Uh, my name is Dave Arlen, I'm uh, representing ATSC today. Thank you all for coming to get a little uh, picture of what's happening with ATSC. Madeline Noland is the president of the Standard Setting Organization, the Advanced Television Systems Committee, and joining her today is Francesco Moretti. He is the group international CEO of FinCon's group from Italy, and and so Francesco and Madeline are gonna bring you up to speed on what's happening with ATSC3 here at the show, and then we can enjoy a reception together. So good to see everybody together, and Madeline, the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much, Dave. And welcome, Francesco, also Deputy CEO of FinCon's group. And uh, what we're here to talk about is so ATSC 3.0, Next Gen TV, people have a lot of PowerPoints. This is what it might look like. This is how much money we might make. This is all the things that might happen. One of the great things about talking with Francesco from FinCon's group is they're actually doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to unpack one of the new projects that FinCon's group is working on with Nexstar Television Station Group. So uh, Francesco is from FinCon's group, so I'll let him talk a little bit about FinCon's group and a little bit about why FinCon's was selected for this particular project, and then we'll start unpacking the project. What is the consumer experience like? What do we expect for the future? And where are the trials going on? So, please. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you all for being here in this last session and waiting for the happy hour. So it's great to have the opportunity to introduce my company. We are a family-owned company, started 40 years ago in Italy and expanded internationally. And now, of course, we are very excited to support all US broadcasters in ATSC3 adoption. And, and that's true. It's really happening. So Nextars is one of the few we are working with to, to make this launch, finally. Uh, of course, it's all about uh, better quality of video, better quality of audio. But where we really come from is really and being exposed with same project in Europe uh, since the last 10 years. So the value we can bring is really help broadcasters understanding the use cases, the business cases, and what have worked out, what have not worked out. So really, you know, accelerate the implementation. And this is also why I believe Nextars uh, selected us to support them in, in their field launch. Um, and I'm so glad they also approved to, to mention this, this initiative. So we have been working with them to make this first uh, uh, launch. In they is actually live in, in Texas, in Dallas. And uh, people that have ATSC receiver, 3.0 receiver, can definitely interact with the broadcast app that is now live and is presenting a personalization of the weather. Uh, so of course, this is related to uh, an API integration with uh, geo localization thanks to the IP so they can really see the local weather on, on their TV and the most compelling other function that we added is really an integration with the Google ad to produce targeted advertising overlay uh, to the broadcast app so this is really the, the features that is anticipating the implementation on the advertising uh, that is really the full potential that ATSC can help broadcaster to increase uh, their monetization and to increase their inventory, uh, creating uh, added value for brands that actually are not having generic impression any longer, but can definitely uh, be aware of who's watching that advertising and with attribution model can really understand if that campaign has effect in, for example, uh, a website visit or a store visit of ultimately uh, but buying of the product. Great, thank you. And since this is a tech chat, uh, we, we can't let you out of here without getting under the hood a little bit on the technology. Um, ATSC 3.0 is the state of the art of broadcasting systems in the world today, unsurpassed. And one of the decisions that the membership made early on was that they wanted to align ATSC 3.0 as closely as possible with web technologies. And so not only is it the first ever IP-based broadcasting technology, we also have our interactive system, which is based 100% on W3C, in other words, World Wide Web technologies. So what we're here to talk about is this interactive system. It's a very powerful engine. Uh, one of the reasons why broadcasters 
users and the membership of ATSC chose this route is because they already have digital platforms. Don't you hate that word digital? Television is digital too, right? But anyway, everybody thinks of it that way. But anyway, so they have these platforms where they know how to write HTML5 pages, they know how to do JavaScript, they know how to do C CSS. And so we wanted to build an interactive engine that just followed all those same technologies. So you can just go down the hall and say to your digital department, we need an app that basically does what we have on the web. And that app is portable over into the television system now, being a web-based technology. And I believe that, and I'm gonna look at skip for a minute, but I believe experimentations were done where you took one of these apps and just ran it on an off-the-shelf browser. Um, and these things work that way. He's nodding, so I, I haven't made a fool of myself yet. Right, as long as you can do it with a remote instead of a keyboard, you're good. Um, but uh, one of the other things that's happened is that this is actually a very close, similar uh, technology to a technology called HBB TV, or as my British friends called, HBB TV. Am I right, Raj? Yes. Which stands for Hybrid Broadcast Broadband TV, and this is the system that's being used in Europe. Um, how many people remember QCAT? QCAT? Come on, come on, who remembers, skip, yeah. How many people remember Wink? Oh, we got one. OCAP? Yeah, EBIF? Oh, there we go. Anyway, so you look at all these systems that have come in the past and wonder, is it really gonna work this time? Um, these systems in the past have worked technically, but what are the killer apps? What is really gonna get the audience engaged? How can we get the creative community engaged? Because they're the ones that make the really good stuff that consumers want. And what's great about what FinCons is doing is they have been working in Europe with the HBB TV system for 10 years, and there it's quite successful. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, a particular it Italian um, broadcaster called Mediaset, who's been using a FinCons app with HBB TV, where we can learn a little bit about what kind of creative process is resonating with consumers there, because it's really working. Thanks, Madeline, for this. It's very important to report this story, because it's a success story. And to spoil the answer, interactivity is definitely working in Italy since many, many years now with this uh, adoption of HBB TV. So what Mediaset did is they combined their direct-to-consumer, so their OTT, uh, AVOD, SVOD, uh, with the HBB TV app. So essentially, the HBB TV app become one of the front ends of of their OTT offering. And this has been very successfully because then viewer on the big screen can have features typical for of the direct consumer like pause, rewind, you know, access to a catalog of videos. For example, this was done uh, in the FIFA World Cup of uh, 18 where Mediaset had the right to, to broadcast these uh, matches. So imagine you arrive late to a match, you can restart it or you can access a clips to watch all the highlights or you can see statistics or you can see all, all sort of data and of course with that interaction media set can upon consent track behavior of the audience and then have a data sets to target advertising on, on their behavior and of course question on privacy and this issue may arise but media set addressed this really as a win-win with the audience so they provide premium features so so that audience definitely is willing to accept to be to be tracked because it's having a premium service and even the advertising which is target is definitely because they appreciate to consume a targeted advertising because they are getting informed on things that they appreciate and they and they like so an evolution of this uh, from the content perspective is also trying to increase again monetization so if a champions league match is coming up i could buy it from on my TV, thanks to the integration to the SVOD, because Mediaset is distributing it through internet. And another very compelling feature that they added is dynamic advertising replacement. So thanks to the connection, Mediaset is switching advertising in the break upon profile of audience. So this is really a great uh, advantage for Mediaset that is giving 
added value to their brand, again, as I was saying earlier, not just blind impressions. And one of, there are many uh, advantages, but what I, one last I would say is uh, now in Italy they have 10 million TV set connected to internet, which is almost one half of the household or, or a third of the, of the household. So with the tracking, with the live tracking, they can get lots of live information on audience behavior that is helping a lot them to tailor the content, to react, and to give addressable and targeted advertising. So, okay, a couple things just to mention. Uh, the whole targeting thing, again, this is on consent. So in Europe, as you know, the, probably the privacy laws are the strictest you can think of, and they are working within those rubrics to make sure that it is well within um, privacy and consent laws there. So certainly we can do that here also. Um, I think the other thing that is important to point out about this is how long did it take from the time that media sets started experimenting. So let's say that you wind back the clock and media set is doing what Nextar did. So they've, they've got a pilot up in a city and they're working on it and they're experimenting around. How long did it take to get from the point where they were experimenting to the point where they understood what they needed to do to have success with the platform? The fir first field trial was in 2015, so seven years ago. Seven years, okay. Well, so hopefully here in the US, it obviously will take some time. Um, the digital platforms came out, broadcasters put a lot of investment into that, and it took a long time for those platforms to develop into revenue centers. But what's terrific about where we have today is that we do get to follow in the footsteps of what Europe is doing. We have organizations like FinCon's group who can help us lead the way. So, all right. One last thing, you said in the last panel, Francesco and I have become, become a team here. <laughs> you said in the last panel that you could also help avoid mistakes. What were some of the mistakes that we should avoid? So one, one thing Mediaset launched after the first trial that was not successful was when uh, uh, targeted overlay advertising was published, they offered the features clicking with the red button to expand that overlay in a full-size website published on the TV set. This didn't work out for several reasons. First of all, because the navigation behavior with the remote is not exactly with the mouse, so people maybe struggle going back and forth. And secondly, this is uh, taking out audience from the main linear stream, which is what broadcasters don't want. All right, so I think the lesson learned is that the killer app on TV is is actually TV, <laughs> video, audio, captions, right? But the interactivity can absolutely enhance that experience, um, both for the consumer as well as for the broadcaster. And I don't want to keep people from the libations. Um, do we have time for a question, Dave? Yep. So does anybody in the audience have a question or two for me about ATSC or for Francesco about the experience of getting interactive television on the air. Everybody just wants a beer. We have been very clear, so. <laughs> They're being, uh, the, the consensus is clear. Everybody is done. They want to have uh, uh, join the happy hour. So I want to say thank you very much. Thank you to Francesco and FinCon's thank group for mind. joining me. And thank you all for listening and uh, looking forward to the next one. Thank you. Thank you all. Enjoy the happy hour.